Welcome to Implementing Bidirectional Referrals, Lessons Learned from a National Diabetes Prevention Program case study. During today's webinar, we will introduce CDC's key efforts to scale the National Diabetes Prevention Program in areas that are underserved. We will briefly discuss the partners in that effort and provide an overview of the evaluation framework for the project. Together, with some of our partners, we'll present a key case study completed in 2020, implementing bidirectional referrals and related quality improvement strategies to increase referrals, enrollment, and retention of populations of focus in the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. CDC's Division of Diabetes Translation funds national organizations to further build the National Diabetes Prevention Program, or National DPP, infrastructure in areas that are underserved and increase the availability of the evidence-based lifestyle change program for all adults with prediabetes or at high risk for type 2 diabetes. This five-year cooperative agreement, which began in September 2017, funds 10 national organizations with affiliate program delivery sites in at least three states. Each national organization has started new CDC-recognized organizations to deliver the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program in underserved areas and enroll both general populations and populations of focus in new or existing CDC-recognized org organizations. The populations of focus include Medicare beneficiaries, men, African Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanics, American Indians, Alaska Native and Pacific Islander persons, and non-institutionalized people with visual impairments or physical dis disabilities. The following organizations receive funding to focus on work to scale the national DPP in areas that are underserved the American Diabetes Association, American Pharmacists Association Foundation, Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations, Association of Diabetes Care and Education Specialists, The Balm and Gilead Incorporated, Black Women's Health Imperative, Comagine Health, National Alliance for Hispanic Health, National Association of Chronic Disease Directors, and Trinity Health. These organizations work on five key strategies that support scaling and sustaining the national DPP throughout the United States. These strategies include increasing availability and access to the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program by establishing new CDC-recognized organizations in areas that are underserved, and expanding the reach of existing organizations, increasing clinician screening, testing, and referral of adults with prediabetes or at high risk for type 2 diabetes to CDC-recognized organizations offering the Lifestyle Change Program, increasing awareness of prediabetes and enrollment in the Lifestyle Change Program, increasing retention rates for participants in the Lifestyle Change Program, and increasing benefit coverage for participation in the Lifestyle Change Program. As part of the 1705 Cooperative Agreement, we conduct a national evaluation. The main purpose of the national evaluation is to systematically collect data for each year of the Cooperative Agreement to assess the extent to which recipients and affiliate sites defined as CDC-recognized organizations with the Diabetes Prevention Recognition Program, or DPRP, or code, implement the required strategies in the Notice of Funding Opportunity. The national evaluation has four components. DPRP reporting per individual CDC-recognized organizations, DPRP timeline, performance measures, grantee and site level annual surveys, and case studies and focus groups. 
For today's presentation, we will be sharing information and findings from a case study done as part of the qualitative evaluation component. The purpose of the qualitative case studies is to provide an in-depth evaluation of contextual factors of promising strategies related to recruitment, enrollment, and retention of populations of focus in areas that are underserved. We conduct key informant interviews with staff at the recipient, CDC recognized organization, and or partner level in in-depth interviews with program participants. Today, we are pleased to share with you the findings from a case study we completed last year called Implementing Bidirectional Referrals and Related Quality Improvement Strategies to Increase Referrals, Enrollment, and Retention of Populations of Focus in the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. Before we get started today, I'd like to provide some background and context on bidirectional referrals. After that, we'll dive into the purpose of this case study as well as our methodology. As you can see, a bidirectional referral is where information, in this case, the referral, goes from the healthcare provider to the program or service, and feedback goes from the program or service back to the healthcare provider. This closed loop system allows program staff to share information about patient progress with the referring healthcare provider, allowing the healthcare provider to integrate this knowledge into clinical care and reinforce behavior change. Establishing bidirectional referral systems can be beneficial to healthcare providers and program staff and ultimately improve the patient's experience and clinical outcomes. Implementation of bidirectional referrals is typically described in multiple ways. There's provider education, process change, systems change, or multiple strategy types in which two or more of these strategies are used. Upon analyzing the data for this case study, patient engagement emerged as an additional approach to implementing bidirectional referrals. While both Comagine Health and Trinity Health approached the implementation of bidirectional referrals using multiple strategies. For the purpose of this webinar, the findings focus on each of the four identified ways separately in order to present the most detail about the work of Comagine Health and Trinity Health in these areas. For clarity on the four primary ways, when we're talking about provider education, we're referring to strategies with a primary focus on educating or training, for example, through dissemination of referral guidelines or provider assessment and feedback, healthcare staff. And in this case, healthcare staff includes administrative staff, such as practice managers. Provider education often includes activities related to obtaining buy-in on the bidirectional referral process, education on prediabetes and the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program, and education on the bidirectional referral process. Process change refers to changes involving some aspect of the individual referral process, such as introducing electronic referral systems or bidirectional referrals and developing workflows. Systems change refers to large scale changes involving movement of health staff, expanding the roles of existing staff, integrating non-traditional staff into the care team, and making changes to financial arrangements. Patient engagement refers to approaches to making the referral to the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program more engaging to patients. Quality improvement, or QI, is a valuable component in planning and implementing bidirectional referral processes. When we're talking about QI strategies, we're referring to systematic and continuous actions that lead to measurable improvement in healthcare services and the health status of targeted population groups. QI involves identifying areas for improvement, using data to guide priorities, systematically planning and making changes, and monitoring the performance of those changes over time. Applying QI processes is an important part of implementing bidirectional referrals. 
QI can help with establishing the systems and workflows to efficiently implement bidirectional referrals and contribute to improving and refining the identification, referral, and follow-up of patients with prediabetes. So given the background and context on bidirectional referrals that we just shared, the purpose of this case study was really to describe successful approaches and related QI strategies for implementing bidirectional referrals to increase enrollment and retention of populations of focus in the National Diabetes Prevention Program Lifestyle Change Program, and to assess the perceived effectiveness of the strategies used by identifying facilitators, barriers, and lessons learned in this work. To gather data for this case study, between July and September of 2020, we conducted interviews at the recipient, affiliate site, and program participant levels. All interviews were conducted virtually as data collection happened during the public health emergency and travel was not possible. At the recipient level, we conducted interviews with representatives from Comagen Health and Trinity Health. We also conducted interviews with representatives from five affiliate sites. Those sites are located in Utah, Oregon, Michigan, and New York. And then lastly, we conducted interviews with program participants from one of the Comagen Health affiliate sites located in Oregon and three of the, of the Trinity Health affiliate sites located in Michigan and New York. Now, Comagen Health's overall approach to implementing bidirectional referrals for the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. As a quality improvement organization, Comagen Health's mission is to help organizations make system changes that improve health. For the National DPP, we use a number of approaches to supporting affiliates and other partners in improving closed loop referral systems and enrolling patients in programs. Asset mapping. We typically begin the process of developing a bidirectional referral with affiliate sites by having them conduct an asset map mapping exercise. This activity allows the affiliate site to identify resources that they can assess and utilize in the bidirectional referral process. The second bullet is process mapping or process or workflow mapping. From there, we work with partners to develop a process map to think through the flow of information and set the stage for Plan, Do, Study, Act or PDSA cycles. The third bullet is PDSA cycles. The PDSA cycle is used to test changes in real work settings. The PDSA cycle guides the test of a change to determine if the change is an improvement. Staff from Comagen Health and its affiliate sites follow the PDSA cycle for testing small changes to referral processes, tracking and learning from the results and making process improvements accordingly. We also have additional partner strategies. Um, we have worked with affiliates to leverage internal strategies for which there is precedence in their organization. For example, Providence uses the SBAR or Situation Background Assessment Recommendation Technique as a framework for communication between members of the healthcare team about a patient's condition. The second of these is a care process model. Inner Mountain uses a care process model for providers as an evidence-based guide to medical care. A CPM summarizes clinical literature and provides expert advice regarding the diagnosis and management of certain diseases. One affiliate site developed a CPM for referring patients to the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. We were able to build this into a value-based payment model as a global milestone for this affiliate. The third is academic detailing. Academic detailing, which has its roots in pharmaceutical detailing, was designed to improve physician prescribing practices and is a peer-to-peer -peer educational outreach. The peer-to-peer -peer format of academic detailing has now been adapted for use in improving care quality, as well as to build momentum for change among clinicians and leadership. One affiliate site has been doing academic detailing in individual clinics to share data around the importance and effectiveness of bidirectional referrals for the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. 
We were fortunate to have two policy changes occur during our cooperative agreement, specifically Medicare coverage coming online in 2018 and Oregon Medicaid coverage in 2019. These policy changes created a pathway for engaging providers and referring to programs, knowing there was a resource to meet their patients' needs in these two populations. In addition, these changes also made the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program a greater priority for clinics and health plan partners. We have taken many approaches to provider education since the beginning of this cooperative agreement. We have found that partnering with our affiliate sites and other trusted organizations, as well as the State Department of Health, has been essential to engaging providers and familiarizing them with the National DPP. We provide education in forums where providers already plan to be in attendance and work with affiliates to help them develop engaging materials and a clear referral process, as well as systems and workflows to receive and work with referrals. In addition, we are continuing to explore identifying and leveraging provider champions. We have had a few bright spot examples in this space and are working on scaling up this strategy more systematically in collaboration with our health system and provider association partners. In hopes of creating sustained provider buy-in to our prevention program, we send direct messages to providers at regular intervals with general information on participant progress in the program. Direct messages include current body mass index, or BMI, weight loss to date in percentage and pounds lost, average number of physical activity minutes, uh, general food tracking information in the form of a yes or no answer, and a personalized note from the lifestyle coach about a participant's progress and their next steps. We quickly found that provider buy-in does not always equal participant referrals. Uh, so we moved to uh, update our quality improvement strategies. Um, before we could do a targeted outreach campaign, um, we meet with each primary care provider to give us permission to use their name in our mailings. This is usually done by submitting an SBAR to each provider. For situation, we provide the number of potential participants that a provider sees. For background, we provide general information on the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. For assessment, we provide information about risk and general information about insurance coverage. And for recommendation, we ask the provider if we can do the work in helping their patients reduce their risk. Implementing our three-touch campaign using electronic health record reports, we choose a geographical location and include all clinics in that area. The report pulls patient information from those who meet eligibility criteria. We filtered the information to identify those we knew would be covered by insurance to participate in the program. These potential participants receive that personalized letter from their provider, letting them know about the Lifestyle Change Program and encourage them to sign up for an orientation. Coaches will then call these potential participants who had not yet responded to the provider letter. And thirdly, a reminder postcard is sent to those participants or potential participants who have signed up for that orientation. This work requires a lot of administrative support. So we are currently working on creating automated patient registries that will automatically send information to eligible participants after seeing their primary care provider. Approximately 3% of the people who are mailed flyers end up joining cohorts per our experience and our outreach campaigns. Now, Trinity Health's overall approach to implementing bi-directional referrals for the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. Um, Trinity Health strengthened the bi-directional communication process using a population health approach to identification, screen test refer, and enrollment using a three-tiered approach, provider education, process optimization, and patient engagement. And we began with educating providers and obtaining buy-in from national and local stakeholders that included care management leaders, provider groups, and executive leadership. We identified physician champions across the system to lead multiple efforts, including securing buy-in, peer-to-peer training, workflow development, 
and also advocacy for the Lifestyle Change Program. Next, we focused on process changes through the evolution of screen test and refer, as well as the bi-directional communication piece. We developed the infrastructure to quote unquote, make it easy and take the burden off providers to maintain their support and also patient engagement. We moved to a single instance of an electronic health record system-wide and automated patient registry. We communicate with potential participants through a patient portal, letters, and also traditional um, email for enrollment. We built communication into the EHR to provide participant progress to their primary care physician at regular intervals. Technology was added so that community-based organizations are able to document into the EHR system, allowing for community partners, such as the YMCA or the National Kidney Foundation, to deliver the curriculum and then document the outcome. In fact, Trinity Health was the first Epic user in the country to have a closed loop referral system and shared this foundational build with other Epic users outside of Trinity Health so that we aid them in bidirectional communication. Finally, the last process change was to coordinate and screen participants for social needs and connect them with local resources such as transportation, food access, and housing needs. The last step was to increase participant engagement by elevating awareness by pushing letters from physicians into patient portals, emails, or mailings describing prediabetes. This communication was approved by physicians and shared with patients why they were at risk and how the lifestyle change program can help. So how did we look at these three pillars of work through a quality lens? We aligned our strategy with the Trinity Health Strategic Direction and patient-centered care called Together Health. We partnered with physicians, payer strategies, and colleague wellness teams. We listened to patient and physician communication preferences when creating workflows. And by acting as an extension of Trinity Health's clinical care team through our EHR capabilities, we made it easy for physicians to optimize patient health. Finally, we streamlined the referral and communication processes using data to track our progress and help inform these improvements. We'll go ahead now and jump into findings from our case study. And as a reminder, our findings include facilitators, barriers, and lessons learned organized by the four approaches to implementing bi-directional referrals. In terms of facilitators related to provider education, recipient and affiliate site staff from both Comagine Health and Trinity Health emphasize that gathering input and having buy-in from both providers and administrators helps ensure successful planning and implementation of the bi-directional referral process. Having buy-in or gathering input on topics like the referral workflow, design of the EHR EMR, information to include in the feedback loop, and when to provide feedback are particularly important in this work. They also noted that successful implementation of bi-directional referrals is facilitated by educating providers about not just the referral process and how to make referrals, but also about prediabetes and the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. They shared that provider education should be continuous and stated that it's particularly helpful to frame their messaging such that it includes success stories about the bi-directional referral process and the positive effects of the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program on, on patients. Additionally, recipient and affiliate site staff from Comagine Health and Trinity Health strongly agreed that healthcare champions at both the physician and the administrative level play an important role in promoting and educating providers on the referral process, as well as the issue of prediabetes and the purpose of the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. They shared that having a strong dyadic relationship between program staff and healthcare champions at both the recipient and affiliate site level has been particularly helpful. And finally, recipient and affiliate site staff shared that when planning and implementing bi-directional referrals, having staff on the team who know how to speak using terminology that providers are familiar with 
is especially helpful when conducting provider education and developing workflows. For facilitators related to process changes, recipient and affiliate site staff strongly emphasized that keeping the referral process succinct and easy to understand helps ensure provider buy-in on the process and results in referrals. They also noted that being able to implement the bi-directional referral process through an electronic system is much easier than implementing it through a fax or paper-based system. Additionally, they shared that creating registries within the EMR, EMR to automatically identify patients who are eligible for the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program, and then sending those patients a letter about the program has helped to take the burden off providers in making direct referrals. And finally, recipient and affiliate site staff stated that continuously collecting data and using those data to improve the bi-directional process is an important part of ensuring success. Data may be collected on aspects such as the number of referrals, patients with prediabetes who are eligible for the program, patients who enroll in the program, and physicians who typically refer to the program, as well as physicians who do not. In terms of barriers related to provider education, Recipient and affiliate site staff from Comagine Health and Trinity Health shared that providers and administrators lack of awareness of prediabetes, the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program, payer coverage, the bi-directional referral process, and how to make referrals serve as a challenge in their implementation of bi-directional referrals. They also acknowledged that both healthcare systems and providers are required to focus on many aspects of patient health. These competing demands make it challenging for systems and providers to remain dedicated to implementing, implementing bidirectional referrals and continuing to utilize the established referral workflows. In addition, recipient and affiliate staff stated that while providers may initially be engaged in the process, it's common for their participation to diminish over time. Consistent provider education is required to ensure that providers remain active in the bi-directional referral process. And lastly, recipient and affiliate site staff shared that it's challenging to maintain the momentum of implementing bi-directional referrals without having a healthcare champion to promote the work. For barriers related to system changes, Affiliate site staff stated that many providers are not, are not likely to participate in the bi-directional referral process if the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program is not covered by payers or if they believe that to be the case. Affiliate site staff also acknowledged that it's challenging to understand payer coverage. They noted that their standard practice is to call the payer to check benefits if they're unsure if the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program is covered. Even when calling payers, they sometimes receive incorrect information regarding coverage. Finally, recipient staff stated that some physicians may view making referrals to the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program as extra work for which they're not reimbursed or do not receive any incentive. In terms of lessons learned related to provider education, Recipient and affiliate site staff from Comagin Health and Trinity Health shared that strong healthcare champions are important for obtaining provider buy-in, as well as educating providers. Champions can also contribute to the development of a successful bi-directional referral workflow. Recipient and affiliate site staff also emphasized the importance of developing close relationships with the healthcare champion. Having program staff who are closely connected to a healthcare champion helps to ensure that the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program and the bi-directional referral process are continuously promoted and supported and that any challenges are addressed in a timely manner. Recipient and affiliate site staff stress the importance of being dedicated to obtaining provider buy-in and providing ongoing provider education. Gathering input and obtaining buy-in is a crucial step in successfully developing and implementing a bi-directional referral process. Furthermore, true physician engagement in the bi-directional referral process 
requires more than a one-time provider education activity. Regular ongoing outreach to participating clinics, physician groups, and administrative staff is required to ensure successful continuous implementation of the bi-directional referral process. Finally, recipient and affiliate site staff suggested using program personnel who can speak provider language to gain provider buy-in and conduct provider education. Success in obtaining provider buy-in and conducting provider education activities requires staff members who are familiar with clinical processes and workflows and can speak in clinical terms. For lessons learned related to process changes, recipient staff stated that it's important to let partners know that in the absence of electronic referral systems, fax and other types of referral mechanisms are okay. They shared that some affiliate sites or external partners responsible for delivering the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program may feel that they're not able to implement bi-directional referrals because they do not have a sophisticated electronic referral system. It's important to communicate to these partners that using fax and other referral mechanisms is okay, and that it's more important to get the referral process started rather than waiting to have access to an electronic system. Recipient staff also stated that identifying healthcare champions who have clinical knowledge about prediabetes and the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program, as well as operational experience in planning workflows getting providers to make referrals, and designing systems infrastructure will help ensure that the bi-directional referral process is successfully implemented. They also noted the importance of keeping the bi-directional referral process simple. As physicians have many competing priorities to address, it's imperative that the bi-directional referral process is succinct, easy to understand, and seamlessly integrated into the workflow. Additionally, recipient staff highlighted the usefulness of having clear written documentation about the referral criteria and process, rather than just providing information verbally. To ensure that patients who are referred to the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program meet the enrollment criteria, they suggested developing and disseminating written documentation that clearly outlines these criteria and the steps for making a referral. This documentation can include workflows or more general guidance materials. Again, workflows should be simple and succinct. Finally, they suggested creating automated patient reg registries. For physicians or practices with many competing demands, using a care management approach of creating automated registries of patients who receive referral letters can help ease physicians' point of care burden of making referrals. For lessons learned regarding patient engagement, we heard that it's important to commit to patient engagement. Recipient and affiliate site staff shared that while the onus of making referrals falls on providers, the onus of enrolling in the lifestyle change program mainly falls on patients. Patient engagement is therefore an important driver of enrollment in the DPP lifestyle change program and a key factor in successful bi-directional referrals. And then ensuring that the provider making the referral has a conversation with the patient about it and that they're skilled in what they say and how they say it. Recipient and affiliate site staff shared that a patient is more likely to act on a referral and enroll in the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program when the provider making the referral is clear about the purpose of the referral and is knowledgeable about the program. Some affiliate sites have a dot phrase that populates the after visit summary and clearly outlines next steps for the patient as they relate to the program. In terms of lessons learned regarding quality improvement, recipient staff suggested starting with asset mapping. Begin developing the bi-directional referral process by identifying what assets or resources are available and determining how they can be utilized. Assets can include resources like relevant partners, equipment, people, and materials. They also suggested piloting or testing strategies to see what works within the practice or organization. Developing a new strategy, 
testing it within the practice or organization, learning from the results, and adjusting the strategy as needed helps to ensure success in implementing bi-directional referrals. In addition, they noted that collecting data and tracking results on topics like the number of referrals, patients with prediabetes who are eligible for the program, patients who enroll in the program, physicians who typically refer to the program and physicians who do not, is an essential part of being able to continuously improve the bi-directional referral process. And finally, they emphasize the importance of being dedicated to consistent process improvement and open to change. Recipient staff noted that monitoring and obtaining feedback on what works and what does not work, and then properly, promptly making appropriate changes is an important part of implementing bi-directional referrals. This concludes today's presentation. For more information on bidirectional referrals, please visit the National DPP Customer Service Center.